Today on the DML News Podcast, there's only a few days left until the election day. More votes have been cast so far, early voting than ever before in history. It is one of the most contentious arguments ever about Biden, about Kamala, about Trump, about everything. And we're going to talk about it today. And it's going to be all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word, and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me today. Uh, For the last couple of weeks, we have been taking this set, the Wine and Talk set, which Mary and I usually do a weekend show, and we've been bringing her in by popular demand on Friday afternoons to talk about politics. We usually don't talk about politics, Mary and I. We talk about more about life and family and travel and things that all of us live through each and every day, every single year. And with that said, I started getting messages. What does Mary think about the election? What does Mary think about Harris? What does Mary think about the steal? What does Mary about think about this? So finally we said, let's bring in Mary. And uh, it has been very popular of having her here on the set. So maybe she brings a little bit of a woman's touch to it all. I have no idea. But we have her here with us today. This is going to be the last program of its kind, assuming we know by next week who our next president is. But we are going to get right into it. Uh, but before we do, we want to tell real quick, there is a buy one, get one free, a BOGO, as we call it, on DML CBD, and it's going to be the last one of the year. It may actually be the last one for who knows how long if Kamala Harris actually pulls out some kind of middle-of-the-night victory. So with that being said, go to dmlcbd.com slash BOGO, B-O-G-O. Mary's a huge user of DML CBD. She knows what it could do when it comes to sleep and boosting the immune system and getting rid of eczema like it did for her, thank God. But regardless, dmlcbd.com slash BOGO. It's a buy one, get one free. Do not miss out. Products, when they run out, it's over for that product. All right, Mary, so I want to start off. Denny uh, is on the controls today. Ryan is not. Uh, So what we're going to do is we're going to toss up a little video and a picture that is going to support what we're going to talk about right now, and that is that Joe Biden yesterday on Halloween was biting babies. (laughs) They had a a White House uh, event, and they were biting babies. And I want to hear what it is that you have to say as a mother about the president of the United States biting babies. Uh, it's very creepy. I mean, who does that? Joe Biden. I, I, but he does. he's known for that. He'll sniff people. He'll get up in people's personal space. So I'm not surprised he did it, but it's super creepy. I mean, if that was my kid, I, first of all, I wouldn't even put my kid near him. So. Well, I, you know, I wanted to ask that question. I want to ask <laughs> that question. Who does that? I know, but I think this is an interesting thing because at the surface level, you know, everybody was showing this thing yesterday because it was the big, the big thing. But I, I wanted to get into the nitty gritty of this because we've all been in situations where you're very uncomfortable, where somebody's uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable with what somebody else is doing. And in this particular case, you're at the White House. So I know that if we were invited to the Biden White House to bring one of our babies or our grandchild, we would have declined the, 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 the invite. Sure, right. But let's assume for the moment that for some reason, for work purposes, we had to go. Had to go. And so here we are online, and let's just say it's with, 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 with our baby, with right. one of our babies. And you walk up, and Joe Biden is going to grab, let's say, Denny, when Denny was a kid, is going to grab Denny's foot and go to put it in his mouth. What are you going to do? Are you going to, A, allow him to do it and cringe later, B, pull your baby back and try to make it be like you're just shifting your body or C, just literally say, please don't touch my child like that. Um, I would do B. I, well, instinctively, I would just look to pull my child away and then I would just kind of do like a, ha ha, you know. But he, he actually said creepy stuff too. It was the, the baby was like a chicken and he was like, what kind of seasonings is on the I'm, you know, on the baby. And then like, he was going to like chow down on it. So it was definitely very strange, but I would go with the B where I would just instinctively, I know I would just pull my kid away. Yeah. And, and if he didn't get the point and he, he went to go grab again, I would just move on. 
You just like, thank on. you. Thank yeah, you so yeah, much. Move yeah, on. And, and it's been great. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you need oh, dirty diaper. Got to go. <laughs> what, what, what do you think it says about these mothers who didn't move on, who just allowed it to continue to play out? Well, I, look, you know, maybe uh, some, I don't know, maybe that mother was, didn't, it didn't bother her. I have, I have no idea, but I just know that's what I would do. And I think the majority of the people who saw that clip would think that that was inappropriate and somewhat creepy. And I think they would have done, do the same thing that we're saying we would do, like kind of just instinctively pull your kid away, but then try to make, you know, a light situation of it, but move on. Another thing that we should bring up, uh, because I can't understand it, neither can Dennis, and we'll, we'll put the, the picture up here for people. They'll be able to see it while we're talking. Denny took a picture the other day of over the 17th Street Bridge. Oh, You know what I'm talking about? I saw about. it. And you saw the picture or you saw the No, I saw, I saw it. Oh, you I saw the people? It. Yeah. You saw the people? Yeah. Okay, so there's probably, I'll, I'll say 20 people maybe. Yeah. 20 people standing on the corner as you come over the bridge, uh, and they are all championing for Harrison Walls. Yes. Now, meanwhile, we live in Indian River County, which is hugely conservative. Right. But, man, the majority of the people in this picture are all women, and they're women your age, maybe a little younger, maybe some of them a little older. Yeah, it was a mix. It was a mix. For sure. I, look, a lot of guys can't understand women. You know what I mean? I mean, I'll tell you right now, I, I can't understand half the times you get mad at me. I, I, I don't understand what I did. I did nothing wrong. You know what I mean? You go off the handle. You go crazy. You know, even yesterday, um, like for a period of the day, you were like acting weird. I don't know, you were quiet, you were fucking, I was trying to talk to you, like you just went to it, and I'm like, what's wrong with her? You know, and it's like, I don't know, women are weird. So, uh, oh, stop it. No, guys aren't weird. Men are weird. weird too. Guys aren't weird. Yeah, Walt is weird, creepy. Biden's creepy and weird. Okay. So. Thank you. You just made my point for me, because I was going to say, if I look at a Democrat guy, I look at somebody who I would say is feminine. Okay. All right. Somebody who's supporting Biden, somebody who's supporting Harris, especially somebody who's doing walls, as far as I'm concerned, is a more feminine man. And we have seen a shift in this country to the watering down of what a man is. A couple of years back, the big thing is what was a woman. Right. Right. And it's still sort of playing out today. But what is a man? When I see walls he does not reflect to me what a real man is when i see kamala's husband doug he is again another feminine they're both wife cheaters by the way mm -hmm. important to put out but the days of jfk you know or even clinton for that matter a dirtbag but still he was sort of like a, a like a normal democrat right i look at these guys and i just say they don't represent a guy who's going to be on my football team or they're minorities. That's, that's the other part. When you see these white women, and I, I basically believe that that's the big charge of support that she's got. When you see these white women, what, what's going on in their brain that's different than the already sort of inconsistencies in a woman's brain, like where you could go from being hot one moment to cold the next moment, what do you think is firing in their brain that's different than the normal woman's brain? So wait, you, do you think Harris has a lot of white women's support? Oh my goodness gracious. I think that's where the lion's share of her support is, is the white liberal woman. I also think that the white liberal woman may be one of the most unhinged people in the country, if not the world. Well, I think they're just as no, unhinged I'll as the Islamic nutbag. I'll agree with you that, but I think, I don't think it's that they like Kamala. If it's the white liberal woman, it's because they hate, hate Trump. Okay. We like, Dennis, hate him. Dennis and I have been talking about this on the program now for weeks, that a vote for Harris is not a vote for policy that you like, nope. with the exception of abortion, but it's a vote against Trump and Denny and I look at Trump and we see a guy who's imperfect, like all of us. But why is it that they hate him so much, Mary? Why do they hate him so much? 
Because they, they think he degrades women, you know. How does he degrade well, women? Look at the stuff that came out. I what mean, stuff? And none of it's been proven, but the lawsuits with the the porn star, then the woman who got all that money, I don't remember her name, the one on Eugene the- Carroll. Yeah, on the plane. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, the comments he made that came out, you know, from the Today Show when he was with uh, that guy, what, well, I forget his name, see how fast it, it just- Yeah, like, but, he, but here's, so, so I, I get what you're saying, and I'm not trying to prove you wrong. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what is going through, and maybe you can't figure out the brain because it's so demented that you're trying to figure out what goes through a demented a brain, but- Let's keep in mind that even though Donald Trump has cheated on his wives and maybe he's said a few things about like the Rosie O'Donnells of the world that mm-hmm. aren't the nicest things, Bill Clinton basically molested and took advantage of a young intern. Right. Stuck a cigar, allegedly, in places where you don't stick cigars. hmm Cigars are meant to be stuck in the mouth, not in other places. So he's disgusting. Then you take a look at the two guys we're talking about. Dougie Fresh over there, <laughs> Kamala's husband, all right? But Dennis, what's the deal on him? What's all the different things that Dougie Fresh He slept did? with the nanny. He slept with the nanny. And isn't that there's a video of him, or not a video, we wish we had the video. There's allegations that he actually slapped around one of his uh, dates or girlfriends, right? Yeah. Yeah, his- his girlfriend from uh, 2012. His girlfriend from 2012. They were leaving a restaurant. I think it was in Paris. And they got into an argument. And then Doug slapped her. Right. And I think the argument was over the fact that he didn't like that she was being sort of flirtatious with another guy. Yeah. So the allegation of that he actually put his hand on a woman. Mm-hmm. He has cheated with the nanny. And then Walls just wound up having a uh, a whole hit piece on him by the Daily Mail in which they accused him of cheating as well. Right, Dennis? What what was that all about? Didn't we run a story about that? The Daily Mail? I'm not sure if it's cheating as much as that he, he had a fling with a uh, Chinese woman who was the daughter of a communist official. But it may have been during when he was seeing Gwen Walls because a year later... He married Gwen Walls. Okay, so he didn't. So maybe cheat. not while they were married. He but might he have, have cheated when they were dating. When they were together. Okay, so I mean, look, these these aren't shiny fellows, no. you know. And then but- you've got Joe Biden sniffing up little kids, <laughs> so so and biting little babies. So why is it that they're focusing in on Trump's uh, negativity when it comes to interactions with females, but they're not doing it on their own side? It doesn't make a sense. Well, look. I don't understand it either, but he's been, you know, when you talk to anybody, they hate the way he was tweeting when the last election and, you know, he just, you know, he just says what he wants to say. And even if it's a little bit, you know, off color, I think that's what turned people off. They were just tired of his, his tweeting and complain, you know, and then obviously you know, when he feels like he's been wronged. So I just think in general that the women just, it's that, but they just don't like him. He doesn't come across to them likable. But that, the part that, and look, if we didn't just pull out the library of crap that's against Doug and Walls and Clinton, three major figures that are involved in this election, and of course, Joe Biden sitting here biting on babies. It's kind of gross. And the allegations uh, against Biden from his own daughter about the showering and all this other yeah. different stuff, it's like they're purposely ignoring those facts and just obsessed on Trump. And that the, the inability to weigh all things equal, to me, many guys would say, yeah, you know, that's a woman for you. Yeah, but you also have to realize that the media plays is giving them the the ammunition. You know, when they call him Hitler and he's, you know, going to ruin democracy and he's going to do this and that, you know, that's, I think that's another reason these women are listening to this and being like, he's a really bad, he's bad and you know, we can't vote for him. Or they're just so behind their liberal ideology, they don't care who the Democratic nominee is. They just don't want a Republican in there. Like those women on the corner. I mean, look at the timing. I have not seen Harrison Waltz, any kind of 
gathering in in our Indian River County. But what season is it? The snowbirds are coming back. I guarantee those women are from blue leaning states and they are not true Floridians or from red states without a doubt, just the timing. Every, I told you like two weeks ago, I saw all the trucks coming in and unloading all the cars. So all the snowbirds are back and they plop themselves on a corner. Yeah. It's funny. What Mary's talking about is it's, it's an amazing, uh, event. It's almost like oh, you could orchestrate it to yeah. music. <laughs> So these large carriers of cars, you know, like you, you've seen them. If you're driving on the highway and you've got the large car carriers yeah. where they're all stacked on top of each other going to a dealership, well, what happens is they they bring down these people who, uh, you know, they fl- they can't make the drive from New York right. to Florida or from Massachusetts to Florida, Jersey to Florida. So what they do is they fly down and they have their car transported. And in the middle of A1A or US1, you'll see this big, huge truck yep. always pull in the middle of the road and start unloading cars with all these people on the side, the gray hairs, we call them, on the on the side getting their stuff. And to Mary's point, maybe what we're seeing is the transplants that come down sure. here during the winter months, this is who is championing for them. Yeah. Because to your point, we haven't seen any of that. No, I haven't and seen I, any of that. And I've started to see some, believe it or not, I've started to see some signs on lawns yes. that say Walls and Harris. Now, back in like August, September, I would see Trump stuff throughout Indian River County, but I would never see never. Harris Walls. So you have to look at the timing. I think a lot of it has to do with these are snowbirds and they've probably obviously already voted, but they're just want to get people, you know, to vote. So with that being said, we want to take a woman's pr- perspective on an ad that Dennis and I played earlier during the week In this ad, and for people who are only listening to the program here today, in this ad, we have a husband and a wife. Yeah, I saw it. And they're dressed like you would if you were a Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of American flag paraphernalia. The hat. Yeah. Not a MAGA hat, but the. Right, it's American flag. It's got, yeah, they're trying to make it look very Republican conservative. Not that that's what a Republican and conservative looks like, but that's been the sort of poster child. So the couple walks in. Uh, to the voting, and the woman, the wife, goes over to her booth, mm-hmm. and she looks across at another woman who apparently she does not know. They look at each other's eyes. They kind of give themselves the little nod of, okay, we're going to do something here, and we're not going to let anybody know about it. And then it shows the wife actually circling to vote for Kamala Harris. When she's done, she walks out and her husband asks her if she did the right thing. Let's play Let's play that ad so people can see it. Your turn, honey. In the one place in America where women still have a right to choose, you can vote any way you want. And no one will ever know. Did you make the right choice? Sure did, honey. Remember, what happens in the booth stays in the booth. Vote Harris Waltz. Vote Common Good is responsible for the contents of this ad. So by the way, Mary, that, that narrative is from uh, Julia Roberts. Yes. And she's getting a lot of criticism about it because what we talked about earlier in the week is it's sort of like the Democrats are giving a message to women that say, lie to your spouse. Yeah, it's okay to lie. Yeah. What's your take on that when you see that? Well, first of all, you know, who... You know, who's going to look at a stranger across from them voting and like note it like, you know, who, who, how do you even know what that person is voting for? The whole commercial is just dumb. And yeah, let's, let's just promote being dishonest, you know? Um, and obviously, uh, I can't, I guess they don't really have a very good marriage if, uh, you know, she's got a sneak or they, you know, they're not on the same page. I, I saw somebody wrote uh, an editorial about that, um, commercial. And they were saying that, and it's true. Like if, if your wife is telling you they're going to vote for Trump and then ends up voting for Harris, well, what else are they lying about? You know, what else are they being dishonest about? So it like you, you, you're basically opening this can of worms and you're, you are, they're saying, yeah, it's okay to be dishonest. You know, it's, it's a terrible message. Well, on top of that, I think it's an underlying message because we are constantly being told from the left that Trump and his supporters have been spreading dis and misinformation 
about what may have happened in 2020. Right. And they keep on giving this narrative and the rest of us with brains sit here and say, wait a second, they lied to us about Benghazi. They lied to us about Obamacare. Mm -hmm. They lied to us about almost every single thing you can possibly imagine. They even lied to us and said that if you took the jab, you wouldn't get sick. Right. Then they changed it to you won't be hospitalized. Then they changed it to you won't die. And they've kept that narrative. They're still trying to plug little kids with COVID shots. It's unbelievable. Oh, I was just at um, Walgreens and I had to pick up a prescription. And the woman says, um, have you had your COVID and flu shot? You know, we're offering them. And I was like, so it used to be, do you have your flu shot? Now it's, do you have your COVID and flu shot? Right. So they're still pushing this crap yeah. that was proven not to work. And in fact, there was a whole report on X. We should do this when the election's over. Um, there's one scientist who is now claiming that there is now this turbo cancer, that people are getting cancers a lot faster. Like, so it's accelerating from stage one to stage four, like super quickly. And that when they do the correlation, it's coming back to somebody who took the jab. <sighs> and yet they're still pushing this crap. Yep. You know, uh, John Legend still has his commercials on television. I just saw one the yep. other day about getting your COVID shot. Mm -hmm. And so these people lie to us about everything. And we're supposed to believe that the one time they're telling the truth is about the election. Meanwhile, all we keep on seeing over the last week is one fraud after the next fraud or the opportunity to fraud. We've taught, we've seen the passwords in for all the voting machines mm -hmm. to be released to the public uh, in Colorado. We see that in Michigan, some people are uh, down from mo uh, voting multiple times. In Pennsylvania, they're sending out uh, uh, ballots to people overseas, not asking for identification or proof of citizenship or residency in the state of uh, Pennsylvania. And then, of course, we just had the Chinese student yes. who in Michigan went and voted when he wasn't a citizen and then wanted his ballot back. And that's the only way we caught him. And yet his vote is still going to count. And so now here is the Democrat Party putting out a, a, a an ad that yep. says it's okay to, to be lie dishonest. and okay to cheat. Yep. What's that message sending to kids? I I know, I know that it's it's okay. What do you, what, 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 what does a mother say to their kid when a kid, maybe 12, 13, 14, looks at that? video and says, mommy, what does that mean? Uh, what does it mean? Well, what, what, what do they mean? What, what, what does that mean? Well, you have to explain that they're, that she's lying. You know, that there she's, I guess, told her husband she's voting for one person and now she's voting for another. Um, and then I guess you would have to, I, you know, and that they ask further explanation. You just have to go into, you know, why it's wrong. You have to give other examples. Like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going here, but I'm really going there. And I'm doing something that I know you don't want me to do. It all falls under, into the same bucket of being dishonest. And I don't understand, uh, you know, are they trying to say that like, um, like that obviously this couple doesn't communicate, like you can't talk through things. You know, it's, it's, I, I, I really, I found that whole, I, I don't know, the whole commercial from start to end was just. It was off. Well, one of the things that Democrats have been trying to do for the longest time is they've been trying to dilute the meaning of the family. They yeah, have, they have tried true. to rip down the structure to which this country was built on, which is God, family, faith, right? Country. Yeah. And so think about it. The Democrats are always apologizing for American greatness. They are trying, trying to strip God out of everything. Yep. And then on top of that, they're trying to destroy what it is a family is. They don't want the nuclear family. I mean, they're, they're going to lie to people and say that, uh, you know, boys can have babies. This is the, the this amazingly to me, we're being told from the same people who are going to lie and say that a man can have a baby. These are the people who are going to accuse us of fake news. You have something you want to say, Dennis? Yeah, I, I'll ask you guys, and I'm curious what both your answers are. So look at it up objectively, not with YouTube because you guys vote the same. Uh, but I think one of the debates that I saw with this ad is, do you think a couple can have a long lasting marriage together if they are a part of different political parties and vote differently? Uh, yeah, I do. 
You do. Yeah, I'm, we've seen it. Well, we have we have a, we have one couple friend yeah. where she is a staunch Democrat. Yeah, and he's sort of a centrist, leaning to the right. Yeah, but I also think too. Um, I, I think, I think a majority I think of couples yeah. are like disconnected anyway. I don't know if everybody consumes the news the way we do mm. or follows the politics the way we do. So I think if you have the majority, I mean, couples are just trying to get by, pay the bills, do their thing. I don't know if they get into nitty gritty mm. of policy. And I guarantee some couples probably don't even know who the other spouse, what their spouse is about voting for. Well, what kind of marriage is that? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, Dan, how many marriage, what's the divorce rate? I mean, uh, it's over 50% now. I mean, yeah. So there's your answer. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that brings me back for what you're saying right now, that couples are struggling and people are struggling. Let's go back to the women who are on the street. Are they absolutely ignoring the fact that prices are what they are? I mean, are you seeing prices come down? No, not at all. So they obviously don't give a rat's ass about the pricing. Well, no, because they probably it probably doesn't affect them as much as maybe somebody else. But, you know, these are women that are very, I guess, uh, strong in their beliefs and their liberalism. And they don't care because maybe it doesn't hurt their pocketbook, you know? Or maybe they're on the government teat and they know they're going to get their check regardless. That could be too. Well, obviously that's the other extreme of it. But I don't know. These women didn't look like that. They looked like, you know, they were just I, I go back to clueless. Dennis's. I go back to Dennis's question about can a couple survive on that? And we talked about it the other day um, during our, our program. I don't think you listened to the playback. But Dennis asked me, and I said, you know, if your mother was lying to me like the woman was lying in that ad, yeah. I would have a hard time living with you. Not so much alone for your Kamala Harris vote, although that would be problematic as well, because I would believe that you were actually voting against the future of our children and grandchildren and making it a greater burden on me f for having to go home and bring home the bacon, so mm -hmm. to say. But I would not trust anything you tell me. I just said that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if, if you told me that you were going to get your hair cut and you came home and you didn't look like you got a haircut, I'd wonder where you were. Right. I'd start tracking things. Sure. And so what kind of what life is that as a, in a marriage if you can't trust your spouse to tell you the most basic, honest things? Like, mm -hmm. I voted for Harris and here's why. Right. You know? Well, look at Harris's current spouse. I mean, he cheated with the nanny, so... You know, there's no principles and morals there. No, there's not. No. There was a rumor going around at X that there was going to be a video released within the last couple of days, hasn't been released yet, of uh, a sex tape of Kamala Harris and Montel Williams. No way. Would you watch it? <laughs> no, I would not. Would you watch it, Denny? No. No? No, you wouldn't watch it at all? Did you have something else no. you wanted to add to, Dennis? Oh, no, I just, so, so mom's answer to the question was, yes, you can be of different parties and remain together with a long lasting marriage. Yours answer is no. My answer is no. I, we, well, no, but my answer is yes. If, if you there, they know. So obviously this woman is lying, has been lying all along to her husband that she agrees with and all this and then goes in and, and checks the other box. But I'm saying if they're, if they know at the front, the, the, the start that, you know, they have different views and they're, they're, they talk about it. And yes, I can see right. it. I, it I just want the concept but interesting I, of like the wife who votes for Harris and then the husband says, hey, by voting for her, you know, she wants to uh, tax on un unrealized uh, capital gains and that's going to, you know, hurt my, my investments that I made in the stock market. And yet she's still going to actively do it. Right. Yeah. So it's it, it just, I don't know how marriages. I guess, circumvent that? Do they just ignore it? Like, that's strange. Marriage is supposed to be some stuff you don't ignore. Well, you know, we, we uh, it's funny. I, I've never, um, and he listens to the show once in a while. We're not going to say their names, but Mary and I do have a uh, couple friend, a, fr a, fr a friends or a couple, married couple. I don't even yeah, know how, how do you say it the right way. Uh, we've been friends with them for a very long time, decades. And we... 100% disagree with her politically. And she's never changed her way. 
and she despises Trump and he doesn't. Uh, he's not very political. Like I said, he's a little right of center. But that's but they kind get of my along point. and they're they're heavily in yeah. love. And I guess they have the ability to separate that. I would not be so understanding. And here's why. And and, and maybe I'm wrong in this, but my feeling is is that it is a struggle for most families uh, to be able to survive in this sort of environment. It really is. Sure. I mean, and, and, and some people, you know, it's funny. I, we, we, I, I bought the new car. You know, I went six months without a car because I didn't. So I'll give an next Backtrack. I, I'm going to backtrack and give an explanation on this. No, because somebody asked me about this. No, I know. I usually that's what I do. I just jump yeah. in and you're like, yeah, you got to explain. You backtrack. So I had a leased car. Yes. Which I had leased in New York. And then when we moved to Florida, I had it down here. I had a hand in the lease. My daughter, Kelly, was preparing to learn how to drive. She gets her license next week. Mm -hmm. So what happened was we helped her get a car. And so she's got a car that she can't drive because she doesn't have the license yet. So we would teach her how to drive. Basically, in that car, I was teaching her. So to save money, I wound up driving her car around for six months. I said, why get another car? I'm paying for this car. We got insurance on this car. I'm going to drive around this car. This car is not something I'm used to driving, okay? I had a BMW leased before that, and now I'm driving this Ford Bronco, four-cylinder versus an eight-cylinder. And I didn't care. I'm not like that. I wanted to save the money. So some guy online says, oh, you got plenty of money, whatever. Well, first of all, don't count what I got. And don't do that because somebody who may, and we'll make fictitious numbers, somebody who makes 70 grand a year has a life wrapped around 70 grand a right. year. Somebody who makes a quarter million dollars a year has a life wrapped around a quarter million dollars a year. Both people are going to have to work hard to keep that sort of lifestyle and to pay their bills. So if one guy's got a mortgage for 1200 bucks and another guy's got a mortgage for 3000 bucks, they're both going up if they got adjustable loans underneath the Biden administration. If both are using credit cards, they're both seeing their interest rates go up when the interest rates are higher. So it's not a fair thing to be like, oh, you got plenty of money or whatever it may be. I went all those months without a car, right? So when you and I have fights, what's it usually over? Money. Money. Because I'm saying to you, stop spending the money. Mm -hmm. Stop spending money because what you're doing is you're putting more pressure on me that I got to go out and work harder and make more when it's getting harder to do that. Sure. So when I take that the next level, if you go as far as forget about taking my American Express out of my wallet and go and buy shit that we don't need, if you go and vote for Kamala Harris, who like Dennis said is going to champion for taxing me on unrealized gains, taxing me more because she thinks I'm rich, making things more expensive across the board because she's going to be giving money away to people and printing it and sending stuff overseas and possibly putting my youngest son, Ryan, in harm's way that he may have to freaking join the military by force because we're going to be going into three wars. Right. I say to you, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're putting our son at risk. You're putting our daughter at risk. You're putting our finances at risk. And you're putting more burden on me. How dare you do that? I don't understand how couples can survive that. Because most couples don't have those conversations, Dan. They're on TikTok. They're looking at their Instagram. It's, you know, the Mormon wives show. I mean, it, it's... It, I'm telling you, I believe the majority, there's a, there's a percentage, a, we're a smaller percentage of couples that are really tuned in to what is going on in the political arena. And meaning like how you just brought up those examples, a regular couple that's not tuned in like we are, is not going to think about, oh, my kid might get drafted. They're, just, they're, not, they're not going that far ahead. They're not. They're too wrapped up in themselves and they're too wrapped up in the social media and not the political social media, all the other nonsense crap that's going on. And then, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll tune in just to see, hey, what's going on? But I'm telling you, I, I, I guarantee you the majority of Americans 
or though, and they, they know we're hurt, hurting, but I don't know if they're as in tuned as, or maybe I'll say half. I, I think it's, I'm telling you, there's a good percentage. I mean, we had a friend who didn't even know who their governor was. I know. Okay. So it's they're not so disconnected. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. And, you know, um, so if you have a couple that one's going to vote one way and one's going to vote the other, but it's not the essence of who they are, then it doesn't bother them. See, I, I, I can understand what your argument is there. And, and, and I'd say you probably have a point in years past. This time, I don't know if you do. And here's why I don't think what you're saying is realistic, with all due respect. First of all, how can anybody not be talking about this at home when you've had two assassination attempts on Trump, one of them being so massive there was nothing else in the news? Number two is Joe Biden's no longer the nominee. And that was a very rare thing that's ever happened in you know, political history. So these conversations, just from the news cycle alone, even if you're not paying attention every day like we do, those are things that everybody's paying attention to, like they do the Super Bowl winner and the World Series winner and when an actor dies. Right. Okay. Number two thing that I push back on with you is that, remember, everybody was really doing well under Trump. Gasoline prices went back down under two bucks at some points, was hanging around around two, 250 for a long time. People were having more jobs. The stock market was up. 401ks were up. There was a lot of good things that were happening in the country. They may not have wanted to attribute it to Trump. Maybe they just said, hey, is this is a regular circle of life. I'm focused in on, like you said, my TikTok videos, little Johnny's basketball game, little Janie's, uh, you know, ballerina practice, and we're just going ebb and flow. Right. But when you've got eggs and milk and chicken and car insurance and home insurance and everything else in your life skyrocketing. I'm not talking about going from $2 gas to two twenty. Right. I'm talking about going from $2 gas to four. I'm talking about paying $2 for a thing at the, at the grocery store to now paying eight. I mean, I went shopping with you that one time and we came out with a little bag, didn't even have enough to feed for one dinner yeah. and it was $100. So there's no way that you don't notice what's going on your bank account is shrinking. Your savings are shrinking. Everything is getting tighter. There's no way people aren't having that conversation, honey, around the table. They've got to be having it. So, I mean, that's the thing. How do you have that? And how do you sit there and be married to somebody who's going to vote for Harris when, it, when you know that it's going to be putting an unbelievable, colossal burden on you? I, look, in, in, in the sake of our friends that we're talking about, this one couple— I would hope that a very, at a bare minimum, he would say, look, if you can't get yourself to vote for Trump, which would totally be the case in this one, at least don't go and vote. Stay home. Don't vote for our children's demise. Don't vote for our country's demise or for, because they got kids same age as ours. Don't go voting for maybe there to be a draft because we got to go to war. Right. With three different, don't go voting for somebody who can't find their ass with both hands, and we may actually find ourselves in nuclear war. That conversation has to happen, honey. Look, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I just don't know if it's a do or die for some couples. That's all I'm saying. You know, uh, I just that's I don't think they're just as in tuned. That's all. When when you're out with your women doing your whole thing. You've got your pips, your uh, prayer and uh, parents and prayer and all the other different jazz. Is the political conversation coming up? No. You guys never talk politics? No. Women never talk politics? No, we, no, we, we don't. Why? Guys uh, always talk this stuff. Well, f first of all, Bible study is based off of whatever scripture were, you know, was in our assignment for that week. Um, it basically is just talking about being a better Christian. Like but, we don't really, we don't, we, we have not brought up politics. That alone, that alone. If you look at the Republican party and you look at Trump and you look at uh, various different levels of this entire campaign, God has been brought into it countless times. Trump himself says God's presence in Butler, Pennsylvania saved me. Right. Wait, wait. But, but when you look at the other side, it has been, as far as I'm concerned, anti-God. 
And we just went to one of your PIP things. There was, they had a, uh, it was a fundraiser and we were at a fundraiser and there was guys and there was women there. And we started talking, guys started talking about the politics and we were making some jokes. And one of the leaders of your group said, Hey, no politics. Yes. And it's like, why? This is, it's the politics is a lot more important than the fundraiser that we're there for. So some guy can speak at a at a meeting. I mean, this is the this is the future of your children. There's no more there's no more important topic than this. Like we'll I guess I'll say it's referenced. Like we'll say um about like how you're saying how we're kind of being victimized, you know, Christian, or they're trying to get rid, take God out of certain places, like in the school and stuff. I mean, we'll reference it, but it's never come down to, nobody's ever said the word Republican. Nobody's ever said the word Democrat, liberal, woke. No, we just, it's, it's done in a very politically correct environment because you're in a, a Bible study group with like 30 women. Or do you, uh, you, you, I don't know what, when you, but, but when you look around the room, do you see anybody who you would guess is probably a lib? Uh, I would say there's maybe out of the 30 women, I'd say I think I could peg five. What leads you to believe that they're a liberal? <sighs> gut. <laughs> like my gut feeling. Yeah, but there's got to be something. Well, because when they speak, um, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. They may be not be, but... Um, I, I don't know the exact word. I ju it's just a feeling I have. Well, what kind of speak is usually there? Like if they're commenting on whatever passage we're talking about, um, I don't know. I just, I would say, I'm guessing there's probably like five. Really? Yeah. But you can't give any sort of identifier of something like maybe what somebody said. Well, I can't remember it. now, recall it, but you know when you'll come across something, you're like, yeah, that person's a liberal just because of the comment they made. Yeah. Uh, so there's been stuff like that referenced. I can't tell you off the cuff. I don't remember, but I just remember saying to myself, mm, I think that person might be a Democrat. Last, last conversation. And look, that, you know, yeah. there's people that are Democrats that love God. So we can't. Well, there are you know. people who are Democrats who are great husbands and great wives. Yeah, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend like every Democrat is out cheating on their husband. No. In fact, we uh, let's go back to that one couple we're oh, talking they, about. They adore I each mean, other. They, they adore each other. And I would, if you said to me, "Give me a list of five women who you would bet your life on would never cheat on her husband," she'd be at the top of the list. So it's not like I'm going to sit here and say every Democrat is a Looney Tune and horrible and you know a cheater and a liar. However. Uh, she's totally backwards and a detriment to the country right. when you're voting for somebody who's going to do the sort of things that she's talking about doing. Right. So I'll give you an example. So <clears throat> I've come across like the woman who cuts my hair. <clears throat> I know she's a conservative. You know, she's has talked about, you know, supporting Trump, but I just had my hair cut, you know, the other day. So I was bringing up stuff. How do I know that you aren't somewhere else? <laughs> My hair's shorter. I got bangs. Yeah. But anyway, I was bringing up uh, stuff that had happened in the news, and sh she was not aware of it. Your conservative friend. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is, I, and I've come across, I know people that are conservative, and I may mention something that is just had recently happened in the news, and they have no clue. Clueless. Right. But they can tell you that they love watching these videos of a certain thing on TikTok, or this is the new fad of, uh, you know, how to do your face or whatever on Instagram. So that's my point. I got it. I got it. And some people, they'll say like, oh, I can't, like the, the, they, it's not that they're in denial, but it's just too much. Like they, it's too much worry. So they choose to block it out and say, you know what? I'm not going to follow the news. It's depressing. Or I don't want to know all that because I got enough on my shoulders just dealing with the stuff in my family that I got to worry that, you know, we may have a, you know, a World War III. So some people I think purposely choose to block it out. I know a lot of people say to me, yeah, I, I hardly watch the news anymore, even though I know they're conservative. So a uh, last question for you, and then we'll wrap this up when you're talking about you and your women and whatever, because, you know, to Dennis's point that he made the other day, when you go over the bridge and you see that group of people there, you know, uh, posting support for Harris and Walls, the majority of them are women. And the majority of people who I see uh, in support of her publicly showing their support are women. Because they want to, I told you this 
back when we first started these political wine and talks, they want to be part of a movement. They want to feel like they brought the first black woman president to office. I'm telling you, they just want to jump Despite on. Despite what that person Yeah, they just, want to, they just want to be part of the movement. And I mean, we, we saw it in that film. You know about the white guilt and this. Cra- I'm telling, and, and, and they this were all. This is where you're supposed to say all right, to the audience. But the liberals, some of these crazy liberals, Wait, have this other white day, guilt. The other day, Mary and I went to our friend's house and we had a watch party of the movie called "Am I Racist?" by uh, Matt Walsh, yeah. who is a conservative podcaster, and it is filled with white liberals who are apologizing for the color of their skin. But wait, majority of them were white liberal women. Yes. Women. Yes. So, so, and, and what was their thing? They felt guilty. It's, they're not, feel, they're not playing with a full deck. They're not playing I, I with I mean, a those full women deck. were crazy. I don't know. And, and they paid money for that crazy workshop. I just, so that, that, I, that, this it, was it baffles my, this me. Was they need be, therapy, basically. Of course they do. I think most women do. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think most women do. No, and but maybe I, something hormonal. I don't know what it is. I, look, you know, you what you you're doing is you're putting yourself in your mindset. You got to put. You got to look at the average person. You know, you'll have somebody who loves Taylor Swift, and because she endorsed Kamala, that person's going to go and vote for her. That's not there's a normal people, person. I, That's not an every people, average day person. Then when you when you're walking That's around, don't fun. most of the people are. Off. Well, so I was going to ask you this question. I was going to ask you this question. This is the last question I want to ask you about this to understand a little bit about the woman vote here. So the polls indicate right now that Kamala Harris has got the edge over Trump. Ugh. Okay. I don't believe it. Okay. But I will use your own words against you. You live in a family that is in the news business and you have a husband who for the past 20 years has been sort of an investigative sort of guy, and I can tell you why you shouldn't believe the polls, and I could show you the evidence, whatever, and you have no choice but to listen to me because we're in the car together or we're in bed together or we're watching television together and I'm presenting this stuff to you. You can't run from it. So you've been highly educated because of that. But the majority of women aren't in a marriage with a guy who's in the news business. So when you look at the polls, they are manipulated in such a way to indicate that Trump doesn't have a chance to win. This is what they did to him with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was up in Wisconsin in some polls by 17 points designed to keep the Trump voter home. So this way they say, ah, my vote doesn't matter anyway. CNN had her up by six now or something like that. That's what I'm talking about. Do you believe that the majority of women, even the ones who may be on the conservative side, are going to wind up believing those polls? And are they not getting the news about all the cheating that's going on that we just explained over the last week? These are legitimate reports that have many cases, either videos supporting it or election officials confirming it. So what are you asking me? Do women in general... Who are not newsies? Are they going to? Are they going to believe these polls and not vote? Or whatever. Are they going to believe these polls? Are they believing what's being fed to them? Well, I do believe some of what they're being fed. They believe, sure, absolutely. The ones that are not as uh, in tuned or as educated about uh, the mainstream media, definitely. I mean, if you have somebody who comes home and all they watch is either two, four, or seven, that's what they're getting fed. And that's what they're going to believe. All right. So then I'm going to, so the, so the last question. Of and then this, let me just, I just yeah, wanted to add on to your, the woman thing. I mean, if you think about it, where is there a group of men? Like you have the Swifties for Taylor Swift. You have groupies, yeah. right? That are all crazy about bands and stuff. I mean, there's, it's not really common for men to do that. Even if it's a, a football player, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, the, the, your most popular football player doesn't have, you know, like the Swifties equivalent to what Taylor Swift has. Mm-hmm. And the majority of those Swifties, probably 95% are women, girls. So I, it, it, there's something with our DNA 
Now, I'm not particularly, I never got into that, but some just feel like they need to be part of a movement, of uh, a group, and and then they're going to, you know, they're going to look and follow with the group and with their group leader. This is part joke, part serious in what I'm about to say. Over the course of time, there has been one consistent message, and that is you can't understand women. You can't live with them and you can't live without them. It has been the case. You just can't understand what goes through a female's brain. It's just, it, it just is what it is. And so when you take this, that sort of thing, and you put it into a political situation, guys are even more baffled. And you want to know why you don't have uh, uh, the equivalent of Taylor Swift. Swift has all her Swifty girls. Because guys aren't so dumb to say, oh, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to be a Tiger Woody. Yeah, that's you know, what I'm saying. You know, oh, I know. I'm going to be a, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be a Tom Brady. I, you know, we don't do that. I know. Because guys don't think like that. It's just, I mean, when I see that, it's like, oh my God, really? And, and then the baffling part is, is that they'll have no problem with the transgender. They'll have no problem with a man who once identify as a woman, go into the locker room or go play on a, a, a court and, you know, break the opponent's nose playing volleyball. They, they, they have no problem with that. So it's like- But yet they'll say that men are, you know- are, Right. Are, they don't like, and yet they don't like Trump because, because of the way he treated because, women. Because transgender is different. They've got to be part of the, I'm going to support it, support it. And, you know, I know your feelings. It's, I'm telling you, it's just- Part, I, I can't give you a reason why it is, but it's definitely there. Part of the movie that we saw with, uh, you know, um, I Am Walsh. a Racist. Yeah. Matt Walsh is standing outside the Washington Monument in Washington, oh, D.C., and he's doing a petition to change the George Washington Monument to the George Floyd Monument. And white women are sitting there and being like, yeah, let me sign my signature. And they were going to paint the monument black. And they were going to paint the monument black. Yeah. 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 A and make it 30% bigger. <laughs> It is just absolutely. But people were insane. signing it. I know this. I know they it's were so signing crazy. It. So that's my point. It's, the country's gone nuts. It, they really have, and honestly, it's social media. All right. So last question, and then we got to go. I'm going to put this on you. Obviously, you're going to vote for Trump, and if you didn't, I would divorce you. But if Kamala wins. Oh, gosh. What are we going to do? I don't know. It's going to be scary. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I have talked to friends who are like actively petrified of her winning and have already started doing things to cushion the blow of her becoming into the presidency well, because me, they're business owners, uh, they're property owners, you know, it's a whole spectrum, different, different reasons. And, um, yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, your husband is in the same planning mode. It's in the yeah. back of my mind. Yep. And the minute that they say she's the winner. Yeah. That's what they say. They're like, they have things in place yep. and they're going to wait. And it's just, yep. flip. it's just a flip. It's right. a flip. It's a right. flip. And then what happens if Trump wins, you just turn it off and you slowly walk back Yeah, and you're good to go. But that's that. All right. That's it for us. That's the last time you're going to hear from Mary, although we may on election night call into you because Denny and I and Ryan are going to be here on a marathon. So we may actually maybe have you come up here or whatever it may be. But aside from that, then you go back. Next week, we go back into recipes and cleaning uh, the, the house and That's all the if, things that we talked about. If we about. have a, a verdict next week. If we have this a verdict. could go on for days. That's right. A verdict. That says that we're going to court. But I, I, I agree with you. I do not. Oh, I think this is going to court. We, I agree with you. It's going to court. I don't think that we're going to know the winner for days. We're going to have gonna another be, hanging chad. It's going to be how, how long did that go on for? I don't know. Was but it this, like two weeks? It was a while. But they're not going to allow it Danny, to Danny, how long was it? Do you know? For the hanging chair? No, he doesn't know. He was, he was a little boy. But I remember it was more than a couple of days. It was it was long. It yeah. was long. We went a long time without knowing the president. And this time they're not going to allow it to be Chad because that's a guy's name. <laughs> it would be a hanging Cheryl. <laughs> 
All right. We have to take off. Don't forget, dmlcbd.com slash BOGO, B-O-G-O. Buy one, get one free. It ends really soon because the products are starting to run out. When products run out, it ends up for that. dmlcbd.com slash BOGO. And if Kamala Harris wins, it may be the last BOGO we have for a very long time. People are buying up to a year. We had one guy the other day buy two years worth of product. Oh, really? Be- yeah, because he knows. He knows. He's like, you turn off these BOGOs, I can't afford this yeah. anymore. You know? Yeah. And uh, I've been warning about it forever. Some people are taking it seriously. Seriously, those who aren't taking it seriously, who think that I'm just going to throw another BOGO up after Kamala wins, if she does win, you're out of your mind. As it is, we're already planning to get rid of this place because there's no way we're going to be able to afford it. So I'm telling you, dmlcbd.com slash BOGO. And if you want to join Team DML, that's the way you'll get our show going forward after the election because these freebies go to the waste. No more. It's only Team DML. It'll be behind a paywall. You could get in really cheap before the election for $30. Usually it costs $200. All right. So thank you so much, Denny, for being on the control. And thank you, Mary. You look very pretty today. I should have said that at the beginning. And we had another uh, wine and talk without drinking any, without wine. any wine. That's what politics will do to you. It will yep. drain you <laughs> and, and, and just drive you to drink at home. All right. God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team DML.